if you would, um, be reminded that there are four places in the Bible, uh, Habakkuk 2.4, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, and Hebrews 10.38, that uh, says, in maybe a little bit different form, but basically this, the just shall live by faith. And so we uh, believe that because we are <clears throat> living by faith and we're to live by faith, it's important we understand the subject of faith. Praise God. Um, this week we said that we would move into um, faith versus hope. And um, But before we got there, we really kind of needed to kind of cover Thomas' faith. We talked about last week, what is faith? That was our uh, subject last week, reading from Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, things not seen. We talked about this faith being a supernatural faith and not one of the senses. Um, we talked about heart faith versus head faith, you know, mental assent. Um, John West is called the uh, substitute for heart faith, mental assent. And uh, we really didn't get into this, but Thomas's faith versus Abraham's faith. So let's go, if you will, to John chapter 20. We'll move into John's Gospel, the 20th chapter. And we'll begin reading in the, um, of the 24th verse. <clears throat> um, and this is right after the disciples had seen Jesus, but Thomas wasn't there. And uh, he comes in, they tell him that, you know, um, they saw the Lord, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples wherefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. But he said, Thomas was with them. Um, then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. And then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, reach hither thy hand and thrust it in my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas said, answered and said, my Lord and my God. Now, you know, there's a lot of people. I've heard sermons on my Lord and my God, you know. Um, this is not a compliment at this time. Jesus turns and goes, Thomas, because you've seen, you've believed. Blessed are they which have not seen and yet have believed. Remember, he appeared and said, be not faithless, but believing. And so Thomas um, wanted to see in order to believe. He's basing his belief system on his senses. And Jesus said, don't be faithless. And then he said, you only, you only believe because you saw. But the man that is blessed is the man who did not see and yet believes. And so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's look over in Romans chapter 4 and we'll see a different um, expression of faith from Abraham. So Thomas had the seed to believe. We go to the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. <clears throat> Looking down into the um, 17th verse. And we can back up a verse or so. Uh, verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth or makes alive the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who call those things which be not as though they were and being not 
um, and who against hope, believed in hope, that he might, might become the father of many nations according, according, you need to underline that, according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that he that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And so we have to, you know, here he is. <clears throat> the Bible says, um, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Um, he staggered not at the promise of God. Man, you know, you got every reason to stagger when you're 99 and your wife's 89, and then God says you're going to have a baby. There's a lot of reasons to stagger. I can think of a bunch. Hallelujah. But the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? He was fully persuaded that what God promised, he was able to perform. Glory to God. And so the Bible look back up here in verse um, 17. The very end of that says, and call God, talking about God, calling those things which be not as though they were. I believe it's the Weymouth translation that says he makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Hallelujah. Makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Praise God. And that's what he did when he had Abraham change his name. He was, he was not the father of many nations. He said, no longer shall you be called Abram, but you shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations I have made thee. Before he was the father of many nations, God said, I have made thee and called him Abraham. And I keep, I kind of think about how that, you know, back in those days, they, um, they would go down to the city gates and all the elders would, um, have conversation and meet together. And he can't, and how can you imagine him showing up down there at 99 going, Hey guys, don't call me Abram anymore. Call me Abraham. Because God says the father of many nations, he's made the, you got to know some of the young, whip, younger guys, maybe in their 60s, start laughing at him. Hello? Then they started making fun of that. Oh, Abe, Abe's done gone senile. He might have dementia. He, he's, got Al, he's got that Alzheimer's. Hello? Because there ain't no way. Man, he's done gone, he's gone off his rocker. Here he is coming here at 99, changing his name to the father of many nations. And he don't have any children. Hello? Sarah was, her name was changed from Sarah to Sarah, uh, meaning mother of many nations. <clears throat> and so, but the thing is, it says he staggered not at the promise of God. Now you got Thomas, who they said, we saw him alive. I don't believe it. Matter of fact, until I see him and stick my finger in the palm of his hand, thrust my hand in his side, I won't believe. Jesus shows up later. Comes in, walks right over to Thomas. Take your finger, stick it in my hand, put your hand in my side. Be not faithless, but believing. Blessed is the man who has not seen, but yet believed. The Bible says Abraham, though he did not see, he who against hope believed in hope. Uh, one translation says um, that under utterly hopeless circumstances, he hopefully believed. Under utterly hopeless circumstances. You see, God gives us a hope whereby our faith can lay hold of it. Hallelujah. Our faith can take, and make, take possession of it and make it a reality. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I get a couple of amens out there on the Facebook feed? Amen. Hallelujah. Which leads us, um, you know, to the fact that so we don't walk by sight we don't walk by what we see we don't walk because we don't believe because you know we saw jesus in the middle of the church service and he said um be born again and we go okay i won't get saved because jesus just showed up and appeared to me right now we walk by faith and not by sight now this isn't gnosticism Gnost gnosticism denies the 
actually, actually the validity or the reality of the natural realm and that all things are really spiritual and only so Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Jesus didn't die on the cross. Jesus wasn't physically resurrected. Um, you know, that the natural realm isn't even real, that only spiritual things are. And so, and so we end up denying. We, you know, we had a lot of people in the, um, in what we refer to as the word of faith movement who, who began to get off um, and actually move more into the lines of Gnosticism and so forth with, with what they were calling their faith confessions. Hello? So they would say, you know, I'm not sick. I don't have any bills. My car's not broke down. Well, they just lied. You got a stack of bills sitting over there. You can't say, I, God, the Bible doesn't say he called those things which are as though they are not. He called those things which are not as though they are. A big difference. So what do you do? You call the bills paid. You don't call them not real. A big difference. I said, there's a big difference. You don't call yourself, I'm not sick. I don't receive that. I'm not sick. No. Nope. I believe that I received my healing according to the word of God and that my body is healed. I command my body to line up with the word of God. I'm the healed of the Lord in Jesus' name. That is, is not a faith confession to say I'm not sick. That's denial. That's Gnosticism. That's denying the actual reality of what's going on in the physical realm. So what do we do? We summon or call um, to summon. You know, the word or call could be uh, interpreted to mean summon. We call or we summon those things which be not as though they were. We call them to existence through faith in the word of God. I mean, you're sitting there, your nose is running, your eyes are bloodshot, you got a fever of 104.5. I mean, you know. You can't talk because your, your, your throat's so froggy and you're going, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. And find a room knows you're an idiot. Hello? Can I get anybody to agree with me out there? House? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. We, would, we, we, don't, we don't deny what's, what's out there. But we do call those things which be not. What? My body's not healed. And so I begin to summon healing. I begin to call it healed. I declare it healed according to the word of God. I access a higher law, which is the validity and the power of the word of God. And I summon it to effectiveness in this realm. And so when my body is sick. I call it well in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. I begin to speak what is not as though it is. I do not deny what is. I call which is not that which is not as though it is. Same thing with money. You don't say I don't have any bills. That's not faith. You summon. I call all my bills paid in Jesus name. I summon the finances. And, and according to with finances, I'm a tither and I'm a giver because I'm a tither and I'm a giver. I, I lean on the covenant of prosperity and I call all my bills paid in the name of Jesus Christ according to my covenant of prosperity through the being a tither and a giver in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Car's not broke. No, my car's not. My car ain't broke. We'll go get in there and drive off in it. Amen. Come on. All right. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Can I get one more amen before we move on? Hallelujah. So, um, what we, we come to the conclusion then is, if God says it's so, then it's so. God called Abraham the father of many nations before Isaac was born. And Abraham began, began to call himself Abraham. And his wife began to call him Abraham. And they began to walk according to that that covenant word that God gave to Sagarin, not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. And making reference to things that didn't exist as though they did. And so God said it was so. Therefore, we began to decry, 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 declare um, and say and agree with, because remember it said here that he was strong in faith. He staggered not at the promises of God. Um, back up here. Verse 18, who against hope or under, under utterly hopeless circumstances hopefully believed. I believe Weymouth again. 
that he might become the um, father of many nations according to, according to, according to that which was spoken. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So he wasn't power of positive thinking, the power of thinking good thoughts. It was according to something that had authority, according to something that had the power to change circumstances. You can kind of mark your place here in Romans and run with me over to the, um, <clears throat> the uh, letter. I'm trying to see if it's 1st or 2nd Corinthians. Paul wrote to the church at Corneth. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, I believe, chapter 4. Yeah. Second Corinthians 4. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not. <clears throat> but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. <clears throat> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Listen to this what he says in verse 18. Very, very uh, much tying into what we've already said. While we look not at the things which are seen, while we don't observe. Remember Jonah said about being in the well's belly, he called it th these lying vanities. Okay? It was a circumstance that was lying to him. And he wasn't going to put up with it. Hallelujah. So we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. We're having a hound dog duet out there. Hallelujah. So, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are not seen are eternal. But notice back here, the things which are seen are temporal, temporary. Literally, we could say subject to change. The sick, your body being sick is subject to change. Hello? Your finances, uh, being in debt is subject to change. But the word of God is eternal. It never changes. It never changes. Hello? It will not ever change. So we can take the settled reality of the eternal word of God and apply it because it's unchangeable to the temporary subject to change and that which is subject to change must change when it comes in contact with that which is eternal and cannot change. So the eternal bears weight on the temporary to the point that the temporary has to come in line with the eternal. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. So real faith is built on the word of God. Romans chapter 10. Verse 17, the word of God says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith has to be built on the word of God. It comes from the word of God. It is infused by the word of God. Amen. Now God's dealt to every man the measure of faith, but our faith groweth, our faith increases, and our faith is developed through the word of God. 
you really you can't have Bible faith unless you've got Bible for what you're really believing for. And that's why um, people run off and take things. I remember Dad Hagen wrote a book. It's called You Can Have What You Say. Now, it was a mini book. It was a sermon. But if you just take that title and run off with the title and don't study what he says in the book, number one, in his other teachings about faith, you can just, I can have what I say. I'm, and people start confessing some of the dumbest stuff. Stuff the Bible don't promise them. Stuff that some, in many cases, were against the Bible. They started doing it. People got crazy. They're going. To, one one Raymond student walked up to Brother Hagen back um, around the time I was there, and said, "Brother Hagen's getting out of the um, out of his Ford Bronco. The the board had bought him a, 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 a gotten together and bought him a Bronco, and um, he said, do you take care of my Bronco?" He, he said, "What are you talking about?" He said, well, the Bible says I can have what I say. And I believe that I received your four Bronco. Brother Hagin says, well, I got something to do with it. And the Lord told me to keep it. Yeah, I'm going to get his, going to confess his four. You can't confess my car into your hands. Hello? It's silly. Foolish stuff. Believe for somebody else's wife. Um, the, these are the foolish things that people do in the name of faith that isn't faith. That isn't even biblical. It's wrong. I mean, in some cases, just you're lusting after somebody else's stuff, wife, possessions, and you're in the sin. But yet they're calling it faith. No, faith is built on the word, what the Word of God says. Amen. Now, I know Mark eleven twenty three says he that whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But James comes back and says this. You have not because you ask not or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. In other words, there is a wrong heart in asking that you don't get. He says you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. So what do we do? We stay with the Bible. We stay with that which the word promises us. Amen. We stay with that which God bears witness to from his word. We do not just make stuff up and go, well, I can have what I say, and just start dreaming up every wild, crazy thing in the world you want. You can't believe God for a harem. He's not going to give it to you. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I wish I could see your, what your faces look like right now. Maybe we need to start doing Wednesday night Bible study with a Zoom meeting so I can see your responses. Put a big screen up there in front of me so I can see your faces when, when your mouth drops and hits the floor. Can somebody say amen? amen. Oh, me. Oh, me, or oh me, that's right. Or even a help me Jesus. Glory. So, <clears throat> faith is built on the word. It, we must have scripture to support. Remember Abraham, who against hope believed in hope. Amen. Remember that? We were reading that earlier. Who against hope believed in hope. Praise God that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Amen. I said, amen. All the promises of God, whatever their number, <coughs> find the yes in him. And our amen acknowledges its truth to the glory of God in us. I believe King James says something like, um, all the promises of God um, are in him, yea, and in him, amen. The world translation, particularly down in the notes, when you look down there, <clears throat> it says it, that it says this, all the promises of God uh, find the, literally the yes in him. And our amen acknowledges its truth to the glory of God in us. Amen. So then faith is always birthed out of the word. And the promises of God are yes. I said the promises of God are yes. He promised them because they were yes. Amen. But don't run off and do stupid stuff and then, and then claim that it's faith and then manipulate circumstances to get people to 
chime in with you and try to make it happen when it wasn't God. Hello. I said, hello. I mean, I remember when I was at Rama the year before I, I, I started Rama in 1980, that graduating class of 80, right before I got there. Um, they had a, um, <clears throat> they had an older couple back then. You know, a lot of times we get 70, 80, 70 year old people retiring and coming to Raymond to go to Bible school. They, they took all the retirement. They came, they were going to go into ministry. And they had, we had a couple that apparently that year before I got there that had had that happen. They came, took their retirement, come to Raymond. They were going to go into the ministry. And some young person latched on to them and blood sucked them to by the end of the year, that person had lived without working, without paying for anything. And he lived off this couple the whole year. And he got up at the end of the year to testify of how the Lord met his needs. And apparently the class president or something got up and rebuked him and said, you didn't use your faith. That couple that you um, drained has no money left. You took all their retirement. You spent all their money, and now you're calling it the blessing of God. That wasn't God. You manipulated it. I'm glad somebody told me they should have. I wish they had found it earlier and told them earlier. Probably somebody, they probably came to uh, them, somebody at the end of the year and said, we don't have any money. That, you know, this has happened, and uh, they were probably disillusioned, which I, I can understand. I've seen too many manipulative people under the guise that they're in faith, you know, drop hints. I'm going on vacation to Hawaii. Will you help support me? Here's, your, here's my cash app. Um, so you can help send me to Hawaii. You know, I want to sing. I'm going to sing in the church, but I'm really going for, really, I'm going for a two-week vacation. And people send money. That's not faith. That's, that's not faith. That's manipulation. Amen. Now I, we've put stuff on faith. We, we, we put our building fund on, on, on the uh, um, GoFundMe page. But that was for the, that was to build the kingdom of God. It wasn't for me to go on a vacation somewhere and do something personal, go, go take a trip to Hawaii, you know, and, and, and get people, you know, manipulate people and that kind of stuff. I mean, this, this, that nonsense has to stop in the body of Christ. I said, that has to stop. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Do I got any enthusiastic responses out there? Yeah, just send a couple of help me Jesuses out there. We need a we need a um, meme, a little emoticon that says that's like help me Jesus. Glory to God. Okay. So if it's built on the so back to this, it's built on the word. See, the word of God won't manipulate you. Are you here? It's okay to let needs be known. But please don't under the guise of, you know, you're sowing seed into the ministry, paying for my vacation in Hawaii, um, and manipulate people. I, I, I mean, just like I remember when I first got saved, you know, and we, um, Janie and I had, you know, dated a couple of years unsaved, got saved, we, stayed, we dated two more years and got married. And, um, but the, you know, there was a group of us, we would get together and pray and, um, just, you know, we were so, so, so excited about Jesus. You just, you hang around people that love the Lord or say they love the Lord. You don't know anything. You just, I love Jesus kind of wide eyed, you know, <laughs> I love the Lord. I'm like a deer in headlights. And, um, but there was a group of us and three of us ended up going to Raymond at the same time. And, um, but the person who owned the, the, uh, the, uh, place that we live, the home that we live, we would go pray in and all the, all these, you know, several couples would come together, dating couples. Uh, I don't think anybody was married yet. Were they, honey? Scotty and uh, they, weren't married. they weren't married yet. We're all just dating couples. Um, um, we'd go there on like a Tuesday night, and we'd all hang out and we'd pray and we, you know, um, you know, and 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 we were young and dumb and you know, we grew up. Thank God we grew up. At least some of us did. But I'll never forget one. The, the guy that owned the home who wasn't he did not go to Rama. Uh, he had bought him a. Um, now, you got to understand, this is 1979. <clears throat> he had bought a boom box, but it was a single speaker, not even an auto-reverse cassette player, so he could listen to teaching tapes with. He was so excited. I brought it out and showed it to us because most of us had those little Panasonic, you know, little thing you had a handle on it, and you popped the tape in and it had the lousy speaker in it, but you could listen to tapes and flip it over, you know, ride around with batteries in it. You could listen to tapes. 
And he got this big, big, big boom box thing, mono speaker. And he brought that, showed it to us when, you know, when we were there one night. And um, the, one of the guys went, well, you never know, brother so-and-so. The Lord might speak to you and tell, him to, tell you to give that to me. The next week, we went over there. And that guy came walking out like he had the Holy Grail. Starry-eyed. The Lord told me to give this to you. No, he didn't. He was manipulated into that. He had a seed sown. And then, of course, the other guys going, you know, my faith got me a this boom box thing. No, 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 no. You got me. He got manipulated. That's not faith. You want a boom box? Believe God for your own. Hello. You know, the Lord might tell you to give me that. <laughs> I was just kidding. Yeah, right. If he was just kidding, he should have, when the guy brought it out, he says, no, 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 no. Hello? I've told people before. Um, now, I can't receive that from you because I said something in a way that could have manipulated you. I can't receive that. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. It would, it would be lack of integrity. Hello? And um, that's just the way it is. When it, especially for personal things. If I know you just received an inheritance, I go up to you and say, you know, I gotta, I'm believing God for $30,000 to pay off my car. You know, will you agree with me that God will grant me that $30,000? Just happen to know that you knew that they just got $30,000 inheritance or something. And then all of a sudden they're going, the Lord told me to give you that $30,000. No, you didn't believe God for that. You manipulated it. So let's get away from the foolishness and, and really the, the unbiblical actions and go back to the Bible. And let's use our faith based on the word of God and believe God and go before the Lord and exercise our faith. And let's call those things which be not as though they were and believe God for the things to come in and let him move on people and let him move on the hearts and let him move in a way that will bring it to pass. <clears throat> Where it's not you manipulating it. Hello. Okay. Now back to the beyond based on the Bible. Glory to God. I'm, I'm sure y'all are so excited. How many are excited about all that? Nobody. Okay. Joshua chapter one, verse eight says this book of the law. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Then thou shalt have good success. <clears throat> Notice he said this book of the law. Now, at the time of the writing of Joshua, what they had, they're, they're basically, at that, that time, their canon was the five books of Moses, the, the Pentateuch, the law. Okay? And so it was the word of God. There was one book written that, that was uh, um, really found later and uh, brought in as canon. Job was written, actually uh, predated the writings of Moses. <coughs> but and so in chronological order, Job is the oldest book in the Bible. However, um, this is what they had in their hands uh, at the time, and it was referred to as the law. And so this book of the law should not depart. So you're take, and it was God's word. And so he said here, basically, if we were to put it in New Testament terminology, the word of God shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according, hallelujah, to that which was um, according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Amen? So we have here... The word of God telling us to meditate. Meditate means to mutter, to speak to yourself, to say it over and over again. Uh, the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth. You'll meditate there in day and night. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Too often we wait till we are in a crisis to try to get into faith to get out of the crisis. Are you here? Um, 
it's a whole lot easier to go fill it with gas before you run out than it is to get gas after you run out and you're on the side of the road. It can be done, but it's a whole lot more trouble. Isn't that right, honey? When we bought our, our 2001 Jeep, brand new, it had 60 miles on it, and she, she was riding around the first tank of gas she got somewhere, and it came on and said, near empty. Well, our other vehicle, you could go another, you know, 60 miles on it. That one you couldn't. It pretty much said empty. You were empty. And after that, she never would let it get below a quarter of a tank. Why? Because she's on the side of the road. Somebody from the church came, but happened to see her on the side of the road, stopped, took her to a gas station, got a gas can, went back, put some gas in it, and uh, got it back running. Hello? Y'all here? I mean, it, it, you know, it was a whole lot more trouble than she had stopped at the gas station before it got completely out and filled it up. That's why we're to meditate there in day and night. We're to stay in the attitude of faith. So when the crises of life arise, we're ready for them. Amen. Instead of having to stop and try to go get into faith to come back and deal with it. Amen. Can I get a grunt? All righty. Thank you for the grunt. Yeah. Hallelujah. So um, faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. It's based on the word of God. We meditate in the word of God. We build our faith. We act on it. We don't call those things which are as though they are not. We call it those things because God did as though that are not as though they were. Things that do not exist as though they did. <clears throat> Knowing this, if God says it's so, it's so. Amen? I said amen. Hallelujah. And so next week, we're going to move into faith versus hope. It's not enough uh, time to really even start moving into this. I don't want to get part of the way into this and then, you know, have to cut it off, try to come back. I'd rather pick it up fresh next week. And so next week, we'll move into faith versus hope. They are different. They're both biblical. It is, it is in, the, in, in our teaching on faith, a lot of times we, we so uh, railed on hope because people say, well, are you healed? Well, I sure hope so. They weren't in faith. And we railed on that trying to get people out of the realm of hope over into faith to the point we made faith, hope a bad thing. But hope can't be a bad thing if faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope has its place. Brother Copeland actually had a tape, uh, 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 audio series from a number of years ago, um, and I'm sure it's probably out there still somewhere. It was, refer it was called Hope, the Blueprint of Faith. So hope's not a bad thing. Now abide at these three, faith, hope, and love. So we gave hope such a bad rap, people won't even talk about hope. But if it's the thing that your faith is a substance of, then we need to understand the proper role of hope and what hope really is. Okay? So uh, don't, don't shut down your, with your charismatic word of faith, you know, uh, anti-confession gun, and shut it down before we ever talk about it. Glory to God, because you got to have hope, because if you don't have hope, there's nothing for faith to give substance to. All right, I'm waiting for the, uh, you know, the little things that scroll across the screen to come up. You know, like that's that's how I know you amen to me. OK. No, no thumbs down now. We gotta have it all thumbs up. All right. Praise the Lord. OK, so next week we'll get into that. And we'll continue on the, oh, okay, here we go. Got some, some thumb up bubble poppers there. Glory. Um, got some more. Yeah, some hearts. Yeah, y'all bring it, bring it. Amen. Uh, it's time to receive our offering for the midweek service. Um, if you need to uh, give by cash app or by PayPal, you can go ahead and pull those apps up and, and uh, get your offering ready. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said to give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. With the me same measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. Glory to God. And how, do God, how does God return to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over? I like, I like running over. But you got to get a good measure, pressed down, shaken together first. Amen. Father, we bless the people as they give and tithe. We thank you that as they sow into the kingdom of God, the kingdom is blessed. The kingdom is enhanced. The kingdom is, is uh, supplied financially to do its work in, in the earth. In Jesus' name, we bless the people. 
Amen and amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> so happy you could be with us tonight. I trust you got ministered to and learned something or refreshed in something uh, that will help you in your walk of faith and help you to be a blessing in the earth. I want to remind you of these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.